Hello, and thank you for joining the Word of Faith Love Center channel. I'm Dr. Reginald Garman, and we're just so delighted to have you join us today. I pray that this message that you will hear, it will inspire your soul, it will renew your mind, and it will just bring such joy in your spirit and challenge you to be everything that God has called you to be. Our mission here at Word of Faith Love Center is to love God with our living and to live God through our loving. Share this channel with your family and friends, and we hope to see you real soon at a live service right here at Word of Faith Love Center. God bless you. All my life, he's been faithful. Is that anybody's testimony today? All my life, you have been so, so good. As I was sitting there listening and receiving the ministry and song, I heard the Spirit of the Lord says, not only will I show you my goodness, but I'm getting ready to show you my Godness. I said, Lord, what does that mean? He said, I'm getting ready to do something nobody else can do for you. God said, I'm getting ready to do something nobody else can do for you. I'm getting ready to do something man can't do for you. I'm getting ready to do something your pastor can't do for you. I'm getting ready to do something your doctor can't do for you. I, I, I'm not just going to show you my goodness. I'm getting ready to show you my Godness. Not by might, nor by power, but by His Spirit. God said, I'm going to do something in the earth that cannot be denied. Your testimony is going to be, but God, but God. I don't know how it worked out. I don't know how God did it, but God did it. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else can save and deliver and set free, but God. We can explain goodness, but we cannot explain Godness. We, we can't tell him how he's going to do it, when he's going to do it, but all we know is God did it. I can't tell you what I did to deserve it, but all I know is the sovereignty of God. Get ready to show you my godness. The Bible says, No flesh will glory in his presence. When God's presence show up in your life, nobody can take the credit for it but God. That's his godness. That's when God does something that baffles the minds of scientists and doctors. That's when God does miracles that cannot be explained. That's when God is able to work out and, and change a stony heart and turn it into a heart of flesh. The blind eyes will open, the deaf ears can hear, the lame will walk. I want to see God's Godness in the earth. I thank God for His goodness, but that sometimes you got to see His Godness. Father, Lord, have your way. Have your way in our life. Have your way in our world. You are the only true God. Move by your Spirit, God. You are sovereign, O oh God. 
You can do what you want to do, how you want to do it, and when you want to do it, God. You are omniscient. You are omnipresent. You are omnipotent, God. You're the only God that is able to turn my dark soul, wash it in red blood, and I come out white as snow. Thank you for being God in our life. Have your way in our life, oh God, move by your spirit. Those that need a miracle, God. I pray for those that need a miracle, Lord God. They need you to move on their behalf. They need a financial miracle. They need a healing miracle. They need a miracle, God. Only you can do it. You're a miracle worker. Restore minds, oh God. Heal emotions. Things that the doctors have given up on. God, may you step in and show yourself mighty, oh God. You are God of miracles. You do miracles so well, God. You're still a God of miracles. Let your Godness, oh God, be revealed in the earth. Let the glory of the Lord be revealed that all flesh can see it together. Have your way, God. Restore families. Restore lives that are strung out on addictions, oh God. May you set the captives free. Have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. So that glory can be returned to you. Glory can be returned to you. Be glorified, oh Father. In the name of Jesus, touch every body, touch every mind, oh God, touch every home, touch every wayward child, Father, in the name, draw them back to you, God. Let there be a God work, a God work, oh Father, not just a good work, a God work. In the name of Jesus. We bless your name. We praise you, oh God. And we thank you, God. We thank you, Father, for all that you've already done. Manifest your power in the name of Jesus. Let the saints of God say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the wonderful presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you will, turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. I started last Sunday speaking a message entitled, Staying Power. Everybody say, Staying Power. What blessed my heart in reading this verse is how many people, this, this text, how many people tried to get Jesus to come off the cross? And they asked him to save himself. They questioned his deity and said, if you are God, save yourself. You saved others, save yourself. In Luke chapter 23, verse 39, then one of the criminals who were hanging blasphemed me, blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do not even, do you not even fear God, seeing you're under the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. It's never too late to get saved. Amen? Never too late to get saved. 
But I was amazed that the great blessing is not Jesus just getting on the cross, but the fact that he stayed on the cross. He stayed on the cross and he had the option, he had the power, he had the privilege to be able to deliver himself from the cross. Because in John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18, it says, Therefore my Father loves me, because I laid down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. So he had the power. Say he had the power. He had the power. He had the authority to take his life and to lay down his life. Even the, the Roman soldiers came to get Jesus. Jesus is the one that laid down his life. It was a choice. And this is what love is all about. Love is always a choice. Love is a choice. Love is not about how you feel. Because there are many days you may not feel like loving. I can't get an amen in the house. Are there some days you really don't feel like loving or somebody makes it um, hard for you to love them? And when they least deserve love, that's when you need to give it the most. And in order to give love when it's least deserved, then that's when love is a choice. Love is not a feeling. How do you know you're in love? Because you're willing to make a choice to live a sacrificial life. If you love me, keep my commandments. It is a choice to keep the commandments of God. It's not about how you feel. We're not moved by how we feel. If you are moved by how you feel, you will be wishy-washy all the days of your life because your feelings change too often, too frequent. We cannot be led by our feelings. We must be led by the Spirit of God. Can I get an amen in the house? And the only reason I love you is because the Spirit is leading me to love you. And there are times in my life that I love you when I don't feel like loving you. There are times in my life that I do good for you when I don't feel like doing good for you. There are times in my life that I forgive you even when I don't want to forgive you. Why? Because love is a choice. So when Jesus got up on that cross, I want you to know he got on the cross not because he felt like it. He got on the cross because he loved you so dearly. He got up on the cross because he realized that his love for you was deeper than his pain that he was going through. And sometimes your love has to be stronger than your pain. Ooh, Jesus. Say that again, Pastor. Sometimes your love has to be stronger than your pain. Because if you allow your pain to stop you from loving, then you can get out of the will of God. But God, when you approach God, you want God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. In order to be faithful, you got to learn how to step over pain, how to move through disappointment, how to uh, ignore situations in your life just so that you can allow God to be God in your life. There are God moments all the time and people don't even know it because they don't understand what it takes for you to live the life that you live, but it is a God moment in your life. They don't realize you're loving them because you got an authentic, genuine relationship with God. They ought to praise God for your love sometimes, but they don't know what you had to step over and what you had to go through just to love somebody. Say it's a God moment. It's a God moment. When we love people, it is God working in us and through us. It will bypass how you feel. You love in spite of how you feel. And people can talk about you and they can put a crown of thorns on your head and they can nail your hands and nail your feet and you can still stay there because of your love. It is love that kept him on the cross. And so many of us, we don't have staying power. We don't have staying power. Number one, because we are so moved by our feelings. We allow our feelings to dictate what we do. 
And whatever we don't feel like doing, that's what we decide to do, even though it may be against the will of God for your life. You cannot get out of the will of God just because somebody made you feel a certain way. Because whoever can control you like that is the Lord of your life. Whoever has the power to make you mad, make you upset, make you leave, make you give up, make you throw in the towel, you have made them Lord in your life. And I serve one Lord in my life, and that's Jesus Christ. You don't have the power to get me out of the will of God, no matter what you do. I'm not going to allow you to affect what God has called me to do. I got to look beyond your foolishness, beyond your ignorance, beyond your imperfection, beyond your humanity. Your feelings, when you're able to move beyond your feelings, you got to stay in power. Because no matter where you go, people will get on your nerves. People will get on your nerves in your family. People will get on your nerves on your job. People will get on your nerves in church. You know, I, I'm just amazed. Why, why you don't go to church? I don't go to church because I've had church hurt. Have y'all heard that? Church hurt. You go to work, you never had work hurt. You still married, you never had married hurt. You still shop at a store, you never had store hurt. Wherever there are people, come on, talk to me. Wherever there are people, there you will find hurt. It is not church hurt, it's people hurt. Come on now, we want to blame everything on the church. You're not experiencing church hurt, you're experiencing people hurt. Because there are imperfect people in the house of God, this is where you need to be in order to get better, in order to grow, in order to develop. And I need some mature saints to understand we got some people in here that are not where they need to be. Therefore, they're going to hurt you sometime. But it's okay, baby. You're in the right place. I got enough God on the inside of me to look beyond your foolishness and still love you. Ask your neighbor, say, do you have enough God in you? Do you have enough God in you to deal with me? Do you have enough God in you to cover me? Do you have enough God in you to look beyond my humanity at times? Do you have enough God in me to pray for me? That's the problem. We don't have enough God. We're in the house of God, but we don't have God. And therefore, when we have hurting people and people that are still growing, people that are maturing, including myself, we don't have enough God to forgive. And we want to leave because we've had church hurt. The average years that a person stays married in the United States is 8.1 years. No staying power. The average number of years that people stay on a job is 4.1 years. No staying power. We're living in a society today where staying power is almost obsolete. We go to wherever somebody can make us feel good. And as long as I can feel good, that's where I'm going to go. If you don't make me feel good here, I go over here. We're a nation that is so moved by our feelings, it is sickening. And we are living in a world today where we just do not have stand power. The only problem with not having stand power is that you will never see fruit in your life because fruit takes time. 
And I don't care what kind of tree you are, if you uproot the tree, it cannot bear fruit. Sometimes you got to leave the tree alone, you got to water it, you got to fertilize it, you got to pray it, you got to throw oil on it, you got to lay hands on it, you got to do something to that tree so eventually the tree can start producing fruit. Leave it alone. Don't uproot it. We got to learn how to be stable, but we have to get beyond our feelings, get beyond our feelings. Number two, the second thing that we have to do in order to have stay in power, we talked about Jesus and all these people that were talking to Jesus about getting off the cross. We got to learn how to ignore people. You got to ignore people sometimes. People will always have opinions. They will always try to get you. Listen to me. Listen to me good. People will always try to get you out of the will of God. They will always try to talk you out of your destiny. They will always try to get you out of your purpose. You got to understand, when Peter tried to talk to Jesus about not dying, Jesus spoke to that spirit and said, get thee behind me, Satan. You got to realize when the words of people do not line up with the words of God, it's Satan that's trying to influence you to get out of his will. You got to learn how to ignore critics and leave their words right where they are and not invite their words because it can get you out of the will of God. You cannot be moved by your feelings, number one. You cannot listen to people all the time if you're going to have stand power. Because if you always listen to people, no matter who is in your life, they can have you going to and fro. This person says something, then you go over here and make this decision. That person says something, then you go over here and make that decision. People will run you crazy. And if you try to please everybody, Woo! You have no staying power. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. How do you think you get double-minded? You get double-minded because you listen to too many folks. Too many people are feeding you, and you got to learn how to shut people off and shut them down. Shut them down. They mean well, but they don't know well. They don't know well. They don't know your purpose. They don't know your destiny. They don't know what God has called you to do. They don't know why you are where you are. Maybe you are on assignment. Maybe God has you in a certain place talking to a certain person or in a certain organization for a reason, and the reason is bigger than you. If the reason is bigger than you, certainly it's bigger than your friends. So why in the world are you going to allow people to get you out of the, work, out of the will of God? If this is where God called you to be, then you stay where God called you to be. Don't allow people to get you out of his will. Talking about if I was you. You're not me. That's why it's always a problem when you get too many people involved in your business. Be careful who you talk to and tell everybody your business because everybody will have an opinion about what you should do. You should get wise counsel in the multitude of counselors there is safety, but talk to someone that is not biased because they're going to tell you something that's good for you. I don't have a dog in the fight, so whatever I tell you, I believe it is what the Lord is saying to me to tell you. But when people are so connected to you, sometimes they are biased in their advice to you. And that's why you got to have people in your life that are not drunk on your own Kool-Aid. That's willing to tell you when you need to sit your butt down and submit yourself and do what God has called you to do. I know it's not what you want to hear, but it's good for you. You need people in your life that is not drunk on your Kool-Aid because you give them the power to speak honestly and truthfully into your life. And the only way you know that you're a person that wants to grow and wants to mature is when you don't get mad when people tell you the truth. Woo, it's quiet in here today. It's tight, but it's right. 
If you get upset every time somebody tells you the truth, something is wrong with your growth development. You want to feel good in order to be good. It doesn't work that way. You got to be good, then you'll feel good about yourself. I'm not going to tell you a lie. You're not doing nothing. You're not doing nothing. You need to know that. Okay, let me move on. What, what number was that? Uh, number, two, number one is what? Don't be led by your what? Feelings. Number one, don't be what? Led by your feelings. You cannot have staying power if you're led by your feelings. You cannot have staying power because somebody will always get on your t- nerve. Number two, don't listen to your critics. Don't listen to people. Have certain people in your life that you respect, that you honor. Those are your counselors. But other than that, don't listen to people. Number three, number three, knowing that your staying is not for you, it's for somebody else. The, the reason I stay sometimes, even the reason that I stay in ministry, I realize ministry is not for me. Ministry is for you. The reason I stay, you know, because, can, can I be real with you? I, I ask God this question and, and I'm just going to be transparent right now. I asked God this question. I said, Lord, if I win the lottery, don't y'all look at me like that. Y'all, y'all didn't ask the same question. Don't, don't y'all play with me. Don't play with me this morning. Lord, if I win that one point some billion dollars, this question I ask, would I still pastor? Or would I just live my life on the beach and the golf course? I asked myself, and I, I didn't get a quick response. But you know, I, I realize this, I can't live my life on the beach and the golf course every day. Because those things give me pleasure. But when you really serve God, you get pleasure when you're helping somebody else. That's how you know you have real purpose. If your purpose only fulfills you, then you do not have a purpose from God. You do not have a God vision or a God destiny because whatever God calls you to do is always for somebody else. If whatever you want out of life is to fulfill you and not to bring fulfillment into somebody else's life, it is not God because God is not a selfish God. So even... If I won the lottery, I would still be pastoring. Still be pastoring because I get fulfillment. So the things, this is why I have staying power because I realize what I'm doing is not for me, it's for somebody else. So when Jesus was dying on the cross, he said, this is not for me. I'm already going to glory, but I'm trying to bring my brothers and my sisters to glory. I'm dying. I did not sin, but I'm dying for the sins of the world. Lord, take this bitter cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will. But your will be done. Look at um, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at this in the word of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at what Paul said. Paul said, 2 Corinthians, starting with verse number 3. Blessed be the God of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. The God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation. Who comforts us in all our tribulations. How many tribulations? All our tribulations. Anybody ever gone through some tribulations? Anybody ever gone through anything? Who comforts us in all our tribulations. That, I want y'all to see this, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. 
who comforts us in all tribulations that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble. Pastor, what are you saying? You mean to tell me I have to go through what I go through so I can comfort somebody else? 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 whenever you feel like life is not fair. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 whenever you feel like, Lord, why does this have to happen to me? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 when you feel like nothing goes right in your life. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 when you feel like God is not just. He said, I'm taking you through this that you may be able, that you may be able to comfort those who are in trouble. With the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. How are you going to give comfort if you never receive comfort? For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Lord, have mercy. You mean to tell me I got to be afflicted just so you can be saved? That's stand power. That gives you stand power when you realize it's not about you, your family. It's, about, it's bigger than you. Tell your neighbor, say, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. Stop having a pity party. Stop thinking life is not fair. Life is fair. You cannot encourage somebody. You cannot comfort nobody if you have not been comforted yourself. You don't know the thoughts that a person is going through until you've been through it yourself. But because you've been through it, you understand the fight. Oh, Lord, I understand the fight when I've been through some financial situation. I understand the fight when you wake up in the morning and your body doesn't feel quite right and you still got to press on. I understand the fight. When you know the fight, you can help somebody else fight. You can tell them, baby, keep your hands up. You got to move your head. You got to retreat sometime. You got to go forward. When you know the fight, you understand the thoughts that come to your mind. Girl, you never going to get anybody. You never going to get healed because the devil be talking to you sometimes. When, you, when you've been in the fight, you know how to fight. You don't really know how to fight until you've been hit upside the head. <laughs> but when you've been knocked out sometimes, <laughs> oh, then you know what to do. You know what it feels like. So now, now you can tell them, say, now you're going to feel a little groggly. Your eyes may roll in the back of your head, but give yourself some time. Oh, tell your neighbor, say, I've been in the fight. Amen, amen. We are afflicted. It is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same suffering which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And I hope for you, look at this, I hope for you is steadfast. Because we know that as you are partakers of the suffering, so also you will be partaking of the consolation. I hope for you is steadfast. We won't give up on you. Because somebody didn't give up on us. Amen? Amen? Somebody did not give up on us. And that's why the more fights you've been in, the more compassionate you are. If you've never been in a fight, you give up on people real quick. If you never struggled with anything, you give up on people real quick. If you never had to deal with something and see the power of God deliver your life, you become the most judgmental person in all the world. But when you realize it's only been by his grace and mercy 
that I'm here today. When you realize he's been lonesome, can I get a witness in the house today? When you realize, Lord, you blessed me even when I wasn't right. Baby, you're able to be long-suffering with somebody else. And your hope for them becomes steadfast. People ask you, why don't you give up on them? I can't give up on them because I understand the fight of going through. I understand the fight of process. I understand the fight of God working a little by little from faith to faith and glory to glory. I understand the fight. I understand the fight where he deals with your heart, then he deals with your mind, then he deals with your lifestyle. I understand the fight. That's why I don't give up on you. That's why my hope for you is steadfast, because I understand the fight. Stay in power. Number one, don't be moved by your feelings. Number two, don't allow people to talk you out of the will of God. Number three, know that it's not for you, it's for somebody else. Number four, you got to look beyond your current situation. Look beyond your current situation. Because the things that are seen, they are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. You got to look at your eternal situation, not your temporal situation. Because everything that you're going through right now is temporal, it's not going to last, it's not going to last forever. Baby, don't worry about it. It's going to end. Your your situation right now is temporal. It's not going to last. And you got to understand that when you go through it and you come out on the other side, girl, you're going to have not only a testimony, you're going to have a praise out of this world. Your your praise go to another level when you see how God has brought you through the fire and God has brought you over the mountain. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Your praise, your praise looks different. I'm sorry. When you look and see how good God has been in your life and what he's brought you through, you can't keep quiet. You got to give him glory. You got to look beyond your current situation because too many times God has brought us through. Look beyond your current situation. Look beyond what you're going through because everything in your life, listen to me real good, people of God, everything in your life has an expiration date. Everything in your life can come to an end. Luke chapter 22, verse 37. Luke chapter 22, verse 37. I shared this with you last week. It says, for I say to you that this which is written must still be accomplished in me. This is the words of Jesus. He said, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Talking about Jesus being with the criminals. But he said this, for the things concerning me have an end. Say that with me, the things concerning me. They got an end. It's not forever. You're not gonna be broke forever. You're not gonna be sick forever. You're not going to be lonely forever. You're not going to be depressed forever. You are going to make it through. Everything concerning you, it's got an end. It's got an end. It's got an end. Your children are not going to be lost forever. It's got an end. Before they come back, it's got an end. And then the last thing I want to share with you before we partake of the communion, turn to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Stay in power. In order to stay, you can't be led by your feelings. You cannot be led by your feelings. In order to stay, you cannot let people talk you out of your purpose. In order to stay, You got to realize it's bigger than you. It's for somebody else. 
In order to have staying power, you got to realize this thing got an end. You're not going to be unhappy forever. The reason people commit suicide because they never feel like what they're going through will ever end. That's why they commit suicide. They feel like whatever they're going through will never end. Your employment has an end to it. Everything you're going through has an end. It has an end. It's temporal. It's temporary. The reason people give up on their marriage is because they feel like, oh, this dude ain't changing. But it's got an end. It's got an end. And the last thing I want to share with you that gives you staying power. Jesus said these words after he was resurrected. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. The Bible says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. Say wait. A stand power. Wait until for the promise of the Father. I said staying power last week. One of my deacons, Deacon Mike, texted me last week. Deacon Mike, he's, he's always so encouraging. He texts me when I, when I preach really good, I get a text from Deacon Mike. <laughs> I must have preached really good last week because Deacon texted me. I don't know if I'm going to get a text this week, but... He tested me last week. He said, he said, Pastor, that was a powerful message. He said, as you were speaking, your title was staying power. He said, but what the Holy Spirit spoke to me was stay in power. I said, Deacon Mike, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. That's God. And then I realized something. The only reason I have staying power is because I learned how to stay in power. And Jesus knew this. And he told his disciples, don't y'all go out and do nothing. Don't minister to nobody. I want you to go to Jerusalem and tarry until you've been around power, but I need you to be in power. Because when you're empowered, nobody can move you. Nobody can get you to leave. When you stay empowered, Nobody can talk you out of it. Nobody can get you to give up. When you stay in power, why do you pray? Why do you come to church? Why do you read your Bible? Because I'm trying to stay in power. I need the power of God. I need the Holy Spirit in my life. I need to be empowered. Because when you're empowered, I in, you become empowered. Where you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. Stay in power in order to have staying power. Amen. I hope you got something out of the word of the Lord. Thank you, Deacon Mike. <laughs> That was the Holy Ghost. That was the Holy Ghost. That was the Holy Ghost. 
because I wonder, Lord, how I've been able to deal with it. How have I been able to put up with it? How have I been able to endure? How have I been able to praise you even in the midst of everything I'm going through? It's not me, really. It is the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that gets me to stay. Because if it was left up to you, you would have left a long time ago. But the Holy Spirit arrested you. And say, ah, don't you go nowhere. You got to stay in power. Stay in power. Amen. Deacons, ministers, y'all come. Let's prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. Did you get something out of the word of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Can we give God praise in the house today? Hallelujah. You want me to spend time with God because the more I spend time with God the more I'm able to stay in power the more he empowers me the more I spend time with him the more I'm able to dwell in him in him I live I move and I have my being stay in power people of God because the moment you leave power, the moment you have to operate in your own strength. And you will not have staying power as long as you're operating in your own strength. But when you're operating in the supernatural, the supernatural will allow you to do supernatural things. Every head bowed and every eye closed before we partake of the Lord's Supper. If you're in this place, and maybe you've drifted away from God. Maybe you've backslid. Maybe you're not where you need to be. You got to stay in power. You got to stay connected. Because the moment you become unplugged, you lose your light. And so many of us are in darkness because we've unplugged ourselves from the presence of God. The Bible says, the day that you sin, you shall surely die. Sin does not bring a physical death, but it brings a separation between you and God. Because God cannot dwell in the midst of sin. But guess what? Today you have an opportunity to get right. And I have compassion on you because I've been there myself. I've been in places where I've had to repent and ask God to forgive me because I've allowed things and people to get me out of the will of God. And I don't want to leave here today without praying for you. If you know that you're not where God wants you to be, or maybe you've done something that you're not pleased with and you need to ask God for forgiveness, before we partake of the Lord's Supper, just lift up your hand. I want to pray for you today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, all over the sanctuary. Oh, thank you for being honest with God. Thank you for being honest with God. I pray the power of God come upon you right now in the name of Jesus. The power of God, you've been empowered right now. Thank you, Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. You can put your hands down. Everybody say this prayer with me. Dear Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed for me. I declare that I am saved by the blood of Jesus. I confess my faults and I ask for forgiveness and restoration so that I can be restored into proper relationship with you. I love you, Lord. And I thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands and thank God for restoration today. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Thank God for restoration today. There are some souls that got restored today. Come on, there are some souls that got restored today. There are some souls that got restored today. God loves you, God loves you, and God forgives you. And I pray God will empower you to live a life that he desires you to live.
Anyone need sacraments, just raise your hand and one of the ministers or deacons will serve you. Anyone need sacraments? Everyone stand to your feet, please, as we remember the greatest gift that this world has ever known. To carve a wretch like you. That's love. That's right, that's love. He died for you because he loved you. He made a choice. Hallelujah, Lord. Sing it, choir. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. Hallelujah, Lord. That's love. And that's not how the story ends. But that's That's love. That's love. When Jesus Christ was gathered together with his disciples, he took the bread and he blessed it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. He said, by his stripes, we are healed. I pray that God will show his godness in your life and heal every ailment, every sickness, every disease in your body. He said, eat ye all of it in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents my New Testament, my new covenant, my new agreement with you. And my agreement is that you're saved by grace, not by works. He gave his blood so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And one drop of his blood was enough to save the entire world. He said, drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. Before we leave today, if there's anybody here that wants to make Word of Faith Love Center your church home, just slide out of your aisle right now and come down here to the altar with these deacons and ministers and we'll welcome you into the house of the Lord. Everybody needs a covering. Everybody needs a pastor. If you feel God leading you to make Word of Faith Love Center your church home, please get out of your seats right now and come down here to the altar. Amen. Clap your hands for your sisters. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on. Come on. Come on. Today is your day. Today is your day. Everybody needs a covering. Everybody needs a covering in that life. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? We welcome you right now. Amen. 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 Stretch your hand towards our dear sister in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you so much for drawing your daughter here to a place that they can believe, belong, and become. I pray that the blessing that is upon my life will now come upon her life. I pray, Lord God, that you will use her for the upbuilding of your kingdom, that, Lord, you will maximize every gift and every talent in her life. I pray from this day forward, God, that your favor will surround her like a shield. And, God, knit our hearts together. Make us one family, Lord God. I pray, God, that everything that she needs will be provided for in this house, that she will partake of the bread of life, and that, God, you will do your divine will and your divine work in her life. We receive her into your house today in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands and welcome her. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Now your homework, your homework for this week is to tell somebody about Jesus. That's your homework. You'd be surprised how many times we leave church and we never tell anybody about Jesus. We never share our faith. And that's what it's all about, for you to come here to be empowered so you can go out. God comforts you so you can comfort others. Amen? Go share your faith with somebody in your neighborhood, on your job, in the grocery store. I am equipping you right now to be evangelists. 
and the ministry of reconciliation to run rampant in your life. Go share Jesus. This world needs Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. May the love of God surround you each and every day. And may he order your steps. And may you forever be empowered to do his will. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Y'all have a wonderful week.